Howdy guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Ben and if you're new here, uh, I usually make videos on portrait photography or portrait retouching, mainly using Affinity Photo. And in this video, I want to show you how you can recover or more accurately create skin tone that's been lost because of overexposure or blown out highlights. So if you want to see how I do it all in Affinity Photo, stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's just go ahead and jump in. And in this video, I'm going to go over three examples of increasing difficulty it was the first one being actually a portrait of myself. Now, I talked about this portrait in my last video. And one of the things I talked about is how I just kind of reduced this shine on my forehead. And while not totally necessity, it was something that I thought just kind of helped the portrait look a little more even by removing that shiny hot spot. And I talked about it in the last video, but I didn't actually go through the steps on how I did it. So I thought I would talk about it here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So the way I did it is with frequency separation. Now, if we're going to do frequency separation, we have to make sure that we are working on a layer that has all of our pixel information on it. Because if we were to make a new layer, a new blank layer, and then go to filter frequency separation, we're not going to be able to separate a high layer and a low layer because there's no information to separate. So we have to make sure we're working with a layer that has all of our information on it. Let's go ahead and delete this layer. And the easiest way to do that is to go to layer. Uh, where are you at? Merge, merge visible. By merging visible, it's going to take all your underneath layers and put it into one new pixel layer. So now with that layer selected, I can go over to filter frequency separation and we're going to see that it's going to separate the layer into a high frequency layer and a low frequency layer and usually the default radius at two pixels seems to work what you're really aiming for is to have mainly your texture here on the left side and your color information on the right side if we go too far here we have color information coming into our high frequency layer so we don't want to have that but if we're too low, then you don't have enough texture detail to work with. So usually you can play around until you see something where you're just starting to see a little bit of that color come in and then you can kind of bring it back a little bit. And like I said, usually the 2% or two pixels seems to work fine. I'm going to go ahead and do something like whatever, 1.9 or 1. Point, let's do 1.8 just because why not? 1.8 hit apply. And we are presented with two new layers, a low frequency layer and a high frequency layer. So the first thing we're going to do is click on this low frequency layer and then create a new layer because we're going to be painting our skin color on this. And to help me kind of visualize it, I like to turn the high frequency layer off. That way I'm not seeing any of that high frequency detail. And then all I'm going to do here on this new layer we created Let's go to our clone stamp tool. Make sure we have current layer and below selected. And let's go ahead and pick a kind of low flow brush. We'll say 5%. And I'm going to go ahead and holding down my option key to pick an area to select from. I'm going to grab an area of skin from around here. And then with a bigger brush, just kind of paint in some of this color coming from the other side. Paint in some color here and kind of do just a little bit of back and forth. Now it's going to get kind of blurry, but that's okay because we are working on the low frequency layer. And if we lose some of this texture, uh, that's fine because we can bring it back a little bit later. So let's go a little bit higher up in this forehead, something like this. All right, let's try that. Let's go ahead and turn our high frequency layer back on. And let's go ahead and turn this on and off. And so you can see that just kind of removed that shine. Now, if we look up kind of close, it does get a little bit funny looking because we've just kind of like painted in some of this uh, or underneath this high frequency detail. And what I can do, I think I went a little bit too far on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and just erase it with a very low flow brush. I could use a mask, but I'm just going to do an eraser just to make it easy and just kind of soften up the edges a little bit like that. Now you could leave it like this. And because we are working with a layer, we can always adjust the opacity till we find something that we think looks natural. And if we wanted to bring back some more detail, here's what we can do. 
So one thing you can do is you can just paint directly on the high frequency layer. Now, if you're going to do this, you have to make sure that you have your clone stamp set to current layer only. That way it's only looking at the high frequency layer and sampling from that. So I can go down here, grab some of this skin texture. Let's actually grab a higher flow brush so we can see what we're doing and do this. And I can paint in here. And as you can see, all it's doing is just kind of copying that skin texture. Now, the only issue when you're doing it like this is we have no control over its opacity or if we want to lower it or kind of mask, part, mask parts out, we can't because we've just painted on that layer. So another way, and I think a more, uh, not a better way to do it, go ahead and undo all this, is to do it on a new layer. Now, when we do it like this, we have to do a few things to make it work. So let's go ahead and make a brand new layer. And we're going to set this layer to linear light. And then we're going to go back to our clone stamp brush and we're going to say current layer and below like we usually use it. And then in order for this to work, we have to turn off all the other layers except the high frequency layer. And then when we start clone stamping, you can see here, I'm just painting in that texture. I'm going to grab some texture from the lower part of my forehead, kind of paint it over here. And maybe if I want to kind of I'm going to go to a lower flow brush just so the edges are not so harsh and maybe just kind of try to blend it in a little better like that. Let's go up here to the hairline, do something like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and turn on all those layers again. And here you can see we've kind of painted in some more skin texture and because it is a separate layer, we can adjust the opacity and we can adjust the opacity of both of them to kind of figure out an area or a range that we like. And there you can see, it's good. And see our before and after, all these. And so that was our before and that was our after. Not a huge difference, but it just kind of helps. I think it just helps to kind of even out the portrait. We don't have this big shiny hot spot on my forehead. Now that's a very kind of easy example. The next one we're gonna look at is a bit more common and it's a bit more extreme. So here's another example where this is actually something I come across quite frequently and it's usually when you have your hair light or your kicker light just way too strong and you have just that shiny part of the side of the head just way too bright. So in this example, and actually to be honest, all of these examples I kind of purposely underexposed or overexposed to kind of make a point. But let's say here that this was kind of underexposed and the hair light was already kind of bright, but then when I brought the exposure up in the raw processing step, it just really blew out that highlight. And so very similar to that last one, but more extreme, it's almost pure white here. If we look at our info panel, I can see that we are very close to being blown out. All the RGB values are almost near 255, which would be pure white. There is a little bit of variation in skin texture here, but for the most part, most of this is all blown out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something to make it look kind of like this, where we basically reduced that highlight, but also introduced some new skin texture. And we're going to do this very similar to the last one, just a bit more work because of the bigger space to cover. So let me go ahead and undo that. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to merge visible to create a layer for the frequent separation to work on. And let's go ahead and go to frequent separation. Again, I'm going to just go ahead and keep this. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and keep this at about two. That's fine. Two is fine. Okay. And we're going to do the exact same thing. I am going to grab my low frequency layer, make a new pixel above it. Go to my clone stamp tool here. Make sure we are set to current layer and below. And like I said, if you want, uh, I like to turn off the high frequency layer, but you don't have to, you can keep it on. Let's keep it on for this example. And grabbing some color from down here, because there's no real color information here at all. So we're gonna have to kind of work from both sides. Let me go ahead and start around here. And so I'm just gonna slowly kind of work toward that bright area and maybe come in from the other side here and do the same thing. And I'm painting with a low flow brush just so I can kind of make the uh, changes kind of gradual. Maybe here, I'm gonna grab from this area here. I'm trying to follow the lines of the face and the kind of shadows that are naturally in the face here. 
maybe here I might actually grab some of this dark part at the eye and just kind of extend that a little bit and just slowly work on my way toward the center. Make sure I'm not grabbing any of that eyebrow. And another thing that we can do, and I actually do do this quite frequently, is instead of um, doing clone stamping, you can just paint with a normal paintbrush. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paintbrush. And I'm gonna go ahead and, before we do that, let's go to our eyedropper tool, or our, what is it called in Affinity? Uh, color picker tool. And let's change it to like an average of five by five. That means it's gonna take a five by five section and just kind of figure out the average color and select that as opposed to selecting the color right under your mouse point, your mouse cursor. Okay, so back to my paintbrush, I'm gonna hold down option and click down to kind of pick an area that I wanna color sample from. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab an area like this. And with a low flow paintbrush, I'm just gonna actually paint in like that. And if you want, you can always come back and resample a different area to kind of get a little bit of variation in your color. Maybe come down here, sample from this bit. And maybe the hairline I want to be a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and actually paint in kind of a darker color here. Oops, that's a bright color. Let's go ahead and do something kind of on the darker end. Also her ear down here. Looks like my keyboard's getting low on batteries. Let me go ahead and turn off the backlight. Okay. And so just by doing this, manually painting in is actually another valid and very, I think sometimes underutilized uh, technique. And again, I think it's okay to go a little bit over than you normally would because we're working on a layer, we can lower the opacity uh, later on if we need to. Okay, let's try something like that. All right, so if we zoom out a little bit, a good way to kind of judge is by looking at it at a really small distance. If you've watched my videos before, you often notice I'm always like zooming out and looking at things from far away because this kind of gives me a good indication of like that was the before and here's the after. And I think at this range, it still looks a little bit natural. I might actually drop the opacity down a little bit to kind of keep it looking like a highlight, but I think that looks pretty natural. So if it looks good from this distance, then I think we're okay. All right. Now the problem we have is that we don't have any skin texture here. And so what we're going to do is the same thing we did last time. I'm going to go to a high frequency layer, make a new layer above it, change that to linear light, not vivid light, linear light. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these other layers underneath, go to my clone stamp tool. Let's do something kind of with a hard edge. We'll do mask brush 50% uh, hardness. And there's a lot of really good texture here on the, her forehead and cheek. I'm just going to sample from that. Now, if it's a bit harsh, that's fine because we can always lower the opacity. Or if we want, we can work with a lower flow brush so it's not so intense. And it does look a bit patchy when you're looking at it just like this. But that's okay because once we turn all, all, all the other layers back on, uh, it should look okay. And you know, we can kind of soften up the edges a little bit, so not so harsh. Let's try something like that. Let's turn these other layers back on. Okay. And here you can see we added in that texture. And I think to be honest, that looks actually pretty good. Maybe I might lower our underline layer a little bit just to get it a little bit brighter. And then as far as the texture goes, I think that looks pretty good. That's before and that is after. And of course you can tweak here as much as you want. Maybe if you want to keep some more of that highlight in, I might actually make a mask on this low pixel layer. Let's go ahead and switch to a black and white and I can back to normal paintbrush and I can bring back some of that light by drawing a mask. Uh, really up to you. You can do a lot of things once you're working on layers. So this is another example. So uh, I think this is going to be it for this video. Uh, I know it was probably pretty long and very intricate, but I hope you were able to pick up a few interesting tips and hopefully you can use them in your projects and maybe even do it better than me. Uh, so anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. And until the next one, I will see you next time. All right, guys. Peace.